Today, we're looking at how you can tighten up your CV or resume to land more interviews. But basically, I'm just going to go over the red flags that I look out for when I was a hiring manager for various roles. And hopefully, these will help you tighten up your applications. Keeper is a vendor that we've used for password and secrets management at TCM for quite some time. What's awesome is that they also do privileged access management, and it's way more affordable than some of the big name vendors which if you know us, you know that we're all about affordability. It was an easy yes for us when the partnership conversation happened and unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. So if you're looking for a new solution to protect your organization, check out keeper.io forward slash TCM and schedule a quick demo with that awesome team. Now, it might be a little bit early in the video to give caveats, but here we go anyway. Every hiring manager is different, but we can't actually account for that unless we have some insider knowledge, like a friend who already works at the company or organization. So generally speaking, following best practice and not going too far off piste without good reason is probably going to be your best option for this kind of thing. The goal here is to land the interview and we want to give as many easy yeses to the person reviewing our CV as easily as possible whilst avoiding things that they might consider red flags. As always, if you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. The first thing we're going to talk about is that your CV needs to be understandable at a glance. If you don't do anything else or follow any other advice, please make sure you do this one. Now, personally, I like to see bullet points over paragraphs of text whenever it's appropriate, because really, as a hiring manager, I just want to make a snap yes, no decision. And if the yes is buried in a three page novel, I don't even want to find it. In my previous role, when I was hiring for red team members, I got over 50 applications in less than a day and hundreds by the end of the week when we put out a post for a new role. And I'm sure you can guess that one, I'm not conducting 50 interviews, and two, with such a high number, the easiest way to filter the first pass was to be simply glancing at bullet points in the experience section. So we need to make our CV as clear as possible and as easy to digest as possible. So let's take a look at a quick example. Here we have basically the same information, but presented in two different ways. So the first one is I worked at too many cables from 2018 to 2021 as an IT support. Okay, like as, a, as a hiring manager, I'm done. I might scan the text for some keywords, like for example, software issues, liaising with vendors and clients. Nice, okay. Um, supporting network administration, cool. And that's kind of like all I've just really pulled out of it. But when we take a look at the bullet pointed version, we can see here, okay, so too many cables, three years, and we have infrastructure management, nice technical support, nice vendor and client liaison, basically lots of keywords. And I can focus on these. So for example, if I've written a job description and you're matching keywords from that job description and prioritizing those things in your bullet points or your abstract or wherever it is that you're trying to get across the main information that says, yes, you're right for this role, I'm gonna have an easy time giving you an interview. And even if there are points here that aren't relevant, I'm not going to miss anything that is relevant. So for example, if we go back to the text, I kind of picked out a few things, but maybe documentation is really important. And I've skipped over things like updating documentation and uh, honestly, just reading long form, like reading paragraphs is really time consuming. And if I've got lots of CVs to review and lots of things to look at, then try and break things down and make it as easy to digest as possible. Uh, think of it as like a kid story, you know, like the one sentence per page or something like this, rather than, you know, a thick novel that we need to get through. Next up, I know there are many different approaches to applying to jobs, and this might not be possible if you're casting a wide net and applying to many different roles. But personally, I like to apply for very few specific roles and tailor my CV, do my research and maximize the chance of success for those applications. Now, if you're earlier in your career, then don't worry about this strategy so much, but later on, you'll want a role that suits you and you can be a little bit more specific. 
But what this means is that reading through the job description and making sure that you highlight relevant experience and qualifications that match the role you're applying for. And remembering that it's unlikely that you'll tag everything because quite frankly, most organizations put everything under the sun into job descriptions, but making it easier for someone to evaluate your CV in terms of the things that they're asking for and the boxes that you can quickly check. And this is a good strategy, hitting a bunch of requirements straight off the bat is ideal. Using numbers is also an interesting one too, as it tends to break up text quite nicely and draws the eye to key points. So if you can quantify things like, for example, reduced false positives by 30%, so this can be good and also can be a good talking point in your interview. So be prepared to talk about things like this and the evaluator will be looking for the methodology and the thinking behind these facts later on. And if those skills are transferable to their organization. And finally, let's talk about certifications. I think that having one or two is really important and adds a lot of value to your CV, but there's no need to go crazy. They often have diminishing returns in my experience and people with long lists of certifications, let's say more than like 15 or 20, for example, often lack skills in other areas. And of course, this doesn't apply to everyone. There are always people with lots of certificates and lots of qualifications who are also good across the board, but it's a trends that I've come across quite a few times. And if you're going to list things like certificates of completion, then I think this is okay. Just make sure that you're prepared to answer questions on them. There's nothing worse than getting into an interview and they ask you about a certificate that you've got and you're unable to give some interesting insights or at the very least an overview of what you learned and why it was a valuable experience. Many years ago, I actually saw a CV and in the candidate's experience was a whole page of insert random security standard name or something like this, let's say OWASP oh, top 10. And then next to it, in the next column, it said non-certification, but they'd done this for literally everything, including some certifications that where they'd put the certification name and then put non-cert next to it. And there was probably 50 plus of these things. And funnily enough, I actually gave them an interview because for this role, there weren't that many applicants. It was the first time I was a hiring manager for a role and the interview was only online and only 20 minutes of my time. But of course, when I conducted the interview, they unfortunately couldn't even tell me things like the difference between authentication and authorization or give concrete examples of either of these. So this was a bit of a mind boggling experience to me. But the main lesson here is that if your CV looks wildly different to examples that you can find on the internet without good reason, take a moment to think, is this just making me stand out? Or is this just making the evaluator suspicious and think that I'm completely disconnected from the real world and what the expectations are in terms of a CV? And finally, I'm just going to list off a couple of other things to consider that I think are important. And remember that everyone evaluating a CV or resume is different. But for me, these are just things that I like to see and that make my life as an evaluator or hiring manager a little bit easier. Now, the top one for me is the no more than two pages. Even if you've had a thousand years of experience and it can't fit onto two pages, prioritize and tailor it. There's no excuse for something that's longer than this. And quite frankly, I'm not gonna read it all anyway. And it just tells me that, again, the person submitting this document has a disconnect between what's expected and what they want to provide. Not really a skill that I want to have in my future teammates. Being consistent and simple with formatting, unless you have a background in design or it's appropriate for the role, is always a good idea. Simple is always good. And a lot of CVs go through HR first. So once again, make sure that your key points or the language that you're using matches what's on the job description. Regarding cover letters, in my opinion, they're kind of pointless generally, but if you're applying to a larger organization or a more old school industry, then it's worthwhile including one. I don't know who has the time to read these things, but if an organization asks for one or if it's optional, it won't hurt your chances to include it. And the organization might filter your application if the cover letter isn't there. I'm sure that 99.9% .9 of cover letters these days are just chat GPT. So the effort involved is pretty low from that perspective. So yeah, like I say, just include it if they ask for one. And that's it for this video. I hope you got some interesting insights and useful tips. And of course, if you have questions, then either let us know down in the comments below or catch us on live stream every Wednesday at 12 ET.
Catch you next time.